In this video, I'll talk about how to use the innovation funnel to launch your business or your side hustle, and better yet, how to really use this in your professional career when you're building a product, technology, or a digital solution where you better understand from all the way to ideation stage to building a full-blown product for your end consumers. If these are the kind of videos you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit that like button so that I get to know that you want more of these kind of videos. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Salman. I'm a tech product and innovation expert based out of Bangkok, and I'm currently in the middle of reinventing my life. In this channel, I talk about personal transformation, drawing in from my last 15 years of experience and still learning, and share some of the basic hacks that can help you really accelerate your learning, whether you're a university student or a young professional, for a better future. As always, I'm gonna put the timestamp in the description below, so feel free to jump in whichever the bots you wanna start first or come back for your future reference for your research. With that, let's dive into it. So let me help you understand the framework first and break it down for your own understanding. And then we can move into how to apply this for your own businesses or the side hustle that you're currently in the middle of building. So first of all, an innovation funnel is a term that is used in an organization as part of a process. Uh, think of it as like a mechanism. Instead of giving you a very sort of a theoretical definition to innovation funnel, let me help you give an example to help understand it better. Think about innovation funnel like a filter. Now in any organization or even in our head as an individual, we always have hundreds of thousands of ideas that are constantly bombarding us with different sort of opportunities that we want to explore ourselves. Now there's nothing wrong in having hundreds and thousands of ideas. What is important is to have a checkpoint, a filtering system that help you identifying the one that actually has the right marriage to go into the next stages or of its incubation. So the innovation funnel is in a sense that filtering system that really help you identify the right ideas and then put it through a proper filtration system that eventually helps you recognize the ones that actually are worth pursuing for the long run, going through the whole process of the four stages, which I'll be coming to shortly, and then eventually graduating a product or a service or an idea into a whole new business. The way I developed my innovation funnel, it has four stages. The first stage is called Explore. The second stage is called MVP, which is Minimum Viable Product. Third stage is called Early Growth. And the fourth stage is called Scale or Spin-Off. Let me explain each part so that you understand the full framework and how to apply this also in your personal or professional life. Now the first step is called explore. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in any given situations, we always have much more ideas than real solutions that we can focus on. Hence, it's extremely important to spend a good amount of time in exploring what exactly is it that you want to pursue based on the idea that you have in mind. Once you have an idea, the first step in the explore stage is to do your research, to understand more about the industry, more about the existing market, if there's actually an existing product or a type of similar products that is serving your potential consumers or businesses. Understand, read, try to get as much as secondary or primary data as possible for you to make a better conclusion of the idea that you have conceived. Just because you have a great idea doesn't necessarily mean it really is necessary to be deployed or built or turned into a product or services in the market. So the explore stage is something where you really try to ask yourself all the questions, develop your hypothesis, and then try to understand it either by going to the users, by asking them questions, or sometimes even better yet, create a very low fidelity prototype, which will help you to test your product if you're, let's say, creating an app that is, has a game to it or has a particular usefulness to it. Don't build the app entirely by hiring engineers or trying to sort of bootstrap it all from day one. Instead, think about building a prototype. Think about even making a paper prototype. A paper prototype is nothing but drawing the app user interface in a piece of paper into four, five, six different journeys and then going to the exact users and asking them, if this is the kind of solution that hypothetically speaking you would get from an app would you be able to use it or would you like using it and go and talk about it with other people that's your early validation 
And it is that validation that can help you recognize which of the ideas in your explore stage, whether it's in your startup, it's in your business, it's in your company, that you should be focusing on to move it to the next level. Uh, Einstein gave a very beautiful um, uh, definition, or not definition, more like a quote, that I think is very relevant here. He talked about that if I were given an hour to solve a problem, I'll spend the first 55 minutes to think about the problem and the last five minutes to solve, think about the solution of the problem. And that, in a sense, binds the whole journey of what you have to do or think while, while you are on the explore stage. So explore stage, in a sense, is where you try to explore all the variables, all the insights and data that you can gather to create your hypothesis and make decisions as to what you would like to test by focusing on the users who you're building it for. Now, assuming that you have spent enough time in the explore stage to understand better about the product, the concept, the prototype that you built and you went to the users to try it out over a period of six to 12 months, depending on the size of the project, now you have graduated yourself into the MVP, meaning you have received your initial confirmation or validation of the product or the service or the business idea that you have. Now it can be put into a much more rigorous test. And that phase is called MVP or minimum viable product in long form. Now, a minimum viable product, again, is a concept that you actually use both in startups or businesses or in any corporates before building a full-blown product. The reason because of its minimum viable product is because you're not putting in all the resources that you have available at hand. Instead, you're trying to test that very concept that you had already proven in the prototype and trying to put this into an actual app, solution, service, or in a business idea. This is where you're giving it a shell that's actually tangible and then taking it to that same user who you have tested in the first place to really see, do they really still interact it in the same way they said that they validated you in the first place. And it is at the same time, you actually understand more about how much more you need to develop in terms of your product. At the same time, you also learn a lot about some of the requirements or the insights or some of the latent demands that your customer or your potential service users are going to be having. So the MVP is the most critical stage where you just don't create only one solution and decide that I have done it and this is all that I have to do. Rather, the MVP stage is actually rather long. Sometimes it can even take six to 18 months, two, two, two years in some cases, depending on the kind of product that you're actually going to be incubating for over a period of time. The goal here is to keep iterating over and over again, keep going back to the customers, asking them about the product, getting their feedback, coming back and fixing the product. As you keep going through several series of iterations, you'll see the product or the service or the business idea or the side hustle that you'll be eventually building, which you started with, has eventually grown significantly to get to a much more better stage. And that's exactly is the MVP stage. But even in the MVP, there are some checkpoints that actually is a very good indicator for businesses for companies to really apply to make sure an MVP doesn't necessarily go into growing stage or an early growth stage without the right checkpoints. So MVP always has three checkpoints. If an MVP is doing really good and it has tick all the boxes, then it goes to a growth stage. If an MVP is not doing good enough and it's showing signs of further improvements that is required, then you put into a pivot mode because you realize the idea that you're working with probably needs a little bit of pivoting so you can decide to pivot from your original idea so that you can tweak and make the right changes to go back to the growth again. And the third checkpoint in MVP is that sometimes you realize even after developing the product and even after having the initial validation, that this particular product will not stand the chance of the test for the real world. Hence, what you do is you decide to kill the product and you go back to the drawing board again. And there's no hard feeling in killing an MVP product because you haven't really spent enough time or you have spent a lot of time, you haven't spent enough money or resources into building this. So it's actually not a big cost or a big sunk cost for the company. Rather, the earlier you learn to realize that it's not something that you should be pursuing, the faster it is for you to go back to the explore stage again and picking up through that filtering system an idea that you'll be again going back to incubation. 
third phase is called early growth and it's very self-explanatory. It means that you have already received your initial traction during the MVP stage and now it's time for you to put it more in an expansion mode to see how it actually really can grow much broader than its original user base or the area where you're actually operating. So this is where you start hiring people, you start recruiting all those growth marketeers, you start going through different distribution expansion all over the places so that you see how this product can be tested and comparing with the rest of the product or services or businesses that's out there in the market. And once you have successfully completed your early growth and showing enough traction, enough viability, that's when you move to the final stage, which is you either scale, that's when you go all out, you can focus all energy, all the resources that you have into scaling it because it's already proven it's worth to really be going through the viability process in the entire innovation funnel, or you can also think about spinning it off. Whether you're a corporate incubating an idea or a startup incubating a particular vertical within its existing core product, you can decide to spin it off and set up a separate company or create a whole new project that can be solely focusing on that instead of getting bombarded or getting distracted by the day-to-day -day business operations that you will have. So there goes your four stages of an innovation funnel, which is extremely critical for you to know and apply as you're building a product or a service or a businesses. So step one again is the explore stage. Once you pass the explore stage, you move to the MVP stage. Once you show signs of great validation and early traction, then you go into early, uh, early growth stage. Once you show your growth and you grow significantly during your early growth stage, is that's when you decide to go fully all out into your scale stage or go for a spin-off of the idea or the business or the product and the services. Now, now that you know all the four stages and the innovation funnel, you not only can apply this in your professional life, but now let's take an example and apply it in your own personal life, assuming that you're launching a business or a side hustle that you've been eyeing on for a long time. So now that you're ready to start your side hustle or better yet launch your business, let's apply this innovation funnel and see how you can take your idea all the way to launching yourself. Now, first of all, let's assume that you are a visual artist and a particular type of art that you do, which is very unique and also has a potential niche that you would like to test if this is something that you can actually turn this into a potential side hustle or into a business meaning you are want looking to see if this particular piece of work that you do can actually be sold to potential users or buyers who are looking for this kind of solutions or services. Now, you enter the first step, which is in this funnel called Explore, and you try to understand, are there other artists in this industry or in the global industry who are also doing this kind of arts or similar arts? Is there a potential need or a demand in this kind of particular Artist, uh, artistic style or expression that you need to identify. You need to see how, what's the current prices that are there for this kind of arts. That's going to give you a better idea that how much you'll be able to do a pricing of this particular work that you'll be putting out in the market. This is where you also start looking at trends because the entire market is so dynamic that even if something is really true yesterday, it may not be right tomorrow. So you need to be able to see the patterns as to where the industry is moving its trends and where exactly our majority of the users are searching or looking for things. At this stage, you can actually even apply and use a very simple free tool, which is Google Trends. And you can go there and start typing the particular keywords that you're interested in and to use that for your own advantage to see how many people are actually searching for those kind of contents. How many people from which country, from which direction, from what age, from what demographies are actually looking or searching for that particular type of contents. What people are looking for or searching for are a great indicator of what kind of potential opportunity or need or demand that's there in the market. Now, once you've done the explore stage, it's time to move to the MVP stage. So you have your arts. Now you're going to create different types of iterations of your arts. You're creating, producing lots of arts. You're putting it out into the different distribution systems using online. You create a Facebook group. You create a you know, WhatsApp channel. You do a TikTok or whatever the channels that you would like to use as your distribution channel, but without spending much money. That's why it's called MVP or minimum viable product. So you're not putting out a lot of money from your own pocket 
rather you're using all the free resources or those uh, sort of agile resources that's going to help you get a bit of an early stage idea to this product which is your arts that you're creating with your particular niche in mind now once you've done that you'll see are you really being able to sell pro this product are you having some initial traction with this product is this traction really breaking even for you or it just really makes sense for you that you're only creating for example an art that's taking you an hour or two hours to build but you're actually being able to sell that same art over 150 or a thousand times now if those numbers the unit economics that you've set for yourself really accounts to your viability for really moving to the early growth stage then you're ready to decide that you have to go all, all out to go to the growth stage. So the idea here is that you are testing the water again in the MVP stage and you're seeing if this is the right iteration that is actually going right for you. Uh, you probably also will be able to see that there are some arts that are actually not getting much traction. So you need to change those arts. So you do this all in the MVP stage to fine tune your product, to fine tune your potential business idea so that it is actually well suited for the market. Now, assuming that it is not something that you need to kill because it's really getting the traction and it is something that you no longer need to make any pivot, you decide to move into the next stage which is called early growth. And in the early growth, it's very straightforward. You start putting in more time. Maybe you buy a separate new, um, like a studio for yourself or a rent out a studio for yourself. You buy a new table, some new gadgets, some new gears, some new tools that's gonna help you produce even much more better quality products and outputs. You do some packaging, you buy a website, you go to Squarespace and you get a Squarespace website to start promoting yourself a bit more than that. And then through all of this initial distribution and a little bit of investment of your own money that you have earned through this initial MVP stage sales, you now know that, okay, so your idea of that very specific niche that you identified as your arts is no longer a niche anymore or no longer an MVP anymore. It is already showing enough traction and there's a growing demand in that particular field. So what it means is that it is that art that is getting sold. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be only you who is doing that kind of arts. So now you have a bigger idea. Now you think you want to start your whole company. Now you think it's time for you to spin off either by leaving your current job or leaving your freelancing or sort of thinking about starting your own business where you'll be hiring designers and visual artists who will be able to create similar artwork like this and you'll be able to create much more in bulk in production for yourself and then selling it to the different agencies, different companies or any other online stores or projects. And with that, you take in a complete simple idea of creating visual arts based on your particular interests and you've taken it through all this innovation funnel all the way down to launching your own business or if you just decide to keep it as your side hustle you keep doing your side hustle till you fully decide whether to pivot it from there or you want to make your own business out of it and that is an application of this entire innovation funnel with an example how you can apply this to take one of your existing side hustle and make money from this and really make use of this to maybe eventually launch your own business. So congratulations, you not only have completed learning about this innovation funnel, something that you can apply not just in your side hustle or building your business, but also in your profession, your personal life. You've also learned how to apply this to get started right now. So I'm curious to know what exactly is it that you're gonna do applying this particular funnel to your own life what idea that you've been contemplating for some time or you're already in the middle of exploring and you would like to take it all the way through end of the funnel seeing if this can turn into a potential business or a side house for yours please write down in the comment section below what exactly are you looking at doing and if you find this particular innovation funnel useful for yourself there are a lot of things within the innovation framework that i would love to share based on my existing work that i do for a couple of years and more than happy to walk you through some of the pitfalls and the challenges that we also face while driving innovations within our own life or in our companies or in a professional career. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing so and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Stay well. Bye-bye.